Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese, and today look at this cool family tree that we're going to make. It's not the traditional kind, but it is so fun to look at, and it is incredibly fun to make. And taking the photos with the kids, really, that's the best part. It is so much fun to do. You can see that I've just cut out the tree, and I've cut it, if I turn this, so that it's two trees that are just interlocked together. And the, the photos of the kids are backed with just construction paper or co colored copy paper on the back so that you don't see the imprint that's on the back of the photo paper is all. But in order to start, we're going to make the tree itself. And you have a couple of choices. First of all, I'm going to give you a pattern. You'll download the pattern, or if you want to make your own tree, you can, but you're going to download the pattern and you can... I think it works best if you cut it out of cardstock or chipboard, something a little heavier than scrapbook paper. I did these, and when I take and I interlock them together, you can see how easily it's going to create this dimensional tree that is just so much fun. This chipboard really is in good shape, and it really is kind of tree colored, so you could just go with that. But if you're using a, th a thick cardboard box, and maybe it's got information on it, maybe you're using a cereal box, and it's got stuff printed on some of the sides, all sides are going to show. So if you need to cover the chipboard, you have a couple of choices. What you can do is you can take chipboard and take your brown paper and cover it first. Now it's a pretty big area so rather than putting glue stick or my adhesive what I did is I ran my paper through a Xyron and what I'm going to do is peel off the backing and attach it. When you have a really large area like this I think it works best to just peel the top couple of inches so that it's exposed and then line it up with the chipboard once you have it aligned. It doesn't have to be exact, but you want it roughly to match. Then you're just going to peel it away and press it down until you have your chipboard so that it's now got the brown. But you're going to want to do the same thing on the back side. And then you're going to repeat this process because you're going to need two trees. So you're going to do this, put brown paper on the flip side, and then do a second one. Now take your pattern and cut it out. If this is too thick for you to want to cut all those layers together, you have another choice. What you can do is take and cut out the chipboard tree, cut out the paper tree and use your adhesive to attach the two together and then cut another tree out and attach to the back that gives you brown on both sides and then repeat the process so either way you choose to do it you need to end up with two trees that are the the shade of brown cardstock paper or chipboard on both sides and so that they are just the matching designs now in order to create the slits what you want to do is take your pattern once again, cut an extra one and cut it, even white will work. You just don't want it anywhere close to the brown of the, of the actual tree that you're going to use. And you can see, if I set this down here, I've gone ahead with my ruler and I've cut, I've marked with pencil and basically the middle of this tree trunk I've marked with a ruler and then I've gone back and you can see when I have these together, I took the dimension of this, which is roughly four inches, and so that uh, roughly at about two inches, I've marked with pencil about where the halfway point is. It doesn't have to be exact. Then you're going to use these as guides to know where to put your slits on the trees because you want them in the same place. So on this tree, I'm going to take my pencil, and let's say on this tree, I'm going to cut from the bottom up. So. I'll start my pencil line and I'll, I'll make it heavier than I normally would so you can really see it. I'm going to go just a tiny fraction past that pencil line. So there is the slit on this one. That means that this one, I'm going to bring in the other half of my pattern, align it 
when it's lined up. This time I'm going to cut from the top down. So this is my halfway point. I'm going to go just a hair below it and I have to support it with my finger so it stays in place. But I'm trying to make a strong pencil line so you can see it pretty, pretty clearly. So halfway down from the top on one tree, halfway up from the bottom on the other tree. Now you just need to cut. And because it's thick, you're going to do double cuts. So what I'll do is cut right on my pencil line. And then I'm going to go right back and right next to it. It's not very thick at all. And I'm tapering as I get close to the top, I'm making it to a point so that when I pull this out, you can see how I have this and I can pull it up and cut it from this side or to the other side. Both sides are going to show in this project, so it really doesn't matter. So you can see how I have a slit. Now I'm going to do the same thing, only this time I'm cutting down from the top on the partnering tree. Now, when I snip off this one, it may be that I may have to go just a little bit further uh, with a slightly deeper notch. It's a little hard to tell. So now I'm going to just line up the two slits, slide them together, and as I bring them down, if I need to rearrange these, I can slide them. And I want them to come so that these bottoms are all aligned. When all four sides of the trees are touching, when the all four roots of the tree trunks are touching, that's when you know that you have it all correctly aligned. Now, this is one choice. If I want to, I can take this out and turn this. It just makes the branches facing a different way. You can decide which way you think looks the best. I actually think this is going to look a little bit better. So I'm going to bring these together. Once again, you slide the tree down until all four of the root touch. And when you these touch and these touch, then it's fully supported and you have your base. Now it's time to look at the photos. So I'm going to bring this in and show you what I did. I simply took, and really this is the most fun part of the project, get your kids, tell them what you're doing, and have them pose in different poses we're going to add poses of them sitting so it can look like they're sitting, leaning on the tree, leaning with an elbow. I mean, it's going to be, it's, it truly is so much fun. But I want the photo, I don't want this to show on the back, so I want it to be lined with a color. Since she's wearing a pink shirt, I picked pink paper. And what I'm going to do is put adhesive behind her, stick it onto the paper, and that way I can cut them out together. So let me take my adhesive. And normally what I do is I kind of hold it up to the light so I can see where to place my adhesive. So I'm going to guess about where the adhesive is and then I'm going to hold it up and see do I have, you do want really solid adhesive because you're going to be trimming it. So you can see one little spot I missed. Looks to me like I have it everywhere else. So adhesive on the back, turn it over, and once you have that down, then you're just going to want to go back with scissors and cut around Addison. So I'm going to start up here and I'll just cut all the way around. You can see it doesn't matter what the background is because you're going to cut that out. You just want poses that make sense for tree life. So as I'm getting up to the end of the cut, you can see that in the position that she's posed in, in order for her to be hanging from the it's embroidery thread. I wanted to see kind of like a rope swing. I'm going to go back now and just along her sleeve, I'm going to cut right in this 
rather than trying to get in there with my X-Acto knife, which you can do, this is the, the lazy way to do it. I'm going to trim this out. And then I'll bring in some colored embroidery thread. Always start longer. It's much easier. And place it in here. I'm going to close her back up. And I discovered she sort of stays closed on her own, but you can always go back and I'll show you. You can reinforce it with a little bit of tape if you want to. So depending on how much off the ground she is will dictate how long you want this embroidery thread to be. But I'm just going to tie a knot. And I think I want the knot to be obvious. To me, that looks more like a rope so that you can sort of see it. So just by pressing her arms back together, it's actually going to work. So if I bring it over here, but when you do yours, let me do this and I'll show you what I mean. So it's just, just going to hang like this. But if when you have your position like this, you could go back with just a tiny bit of clear tape and reinforce on the back of that seam with just a little bit of tape like so. Press it down and then <laughs> trim off the extra. So you have extra durability. And now she's ready to go. When it comes time to cut out little Miss Quincy, I'm just going to do the same thing. Put adhesive behind, attach her. She's wearing an orange skirt, so attach it to orange. Trim all around her. Let's bring this over so you can see her in all of her glory. And if I turn it over, you can see I've just cut all around. And she's positioned so it looks like she's climbing with her arms attaching, you know, just outstretched from branch to branch. It is just so much fun. Now Quincy and Addison are going to take the camera and they're going to take pictures of their parents, Allison and Richard, who are going to pick their poses and we're going to add them to the family tree. I know it's not a traditional family tree, but it provides a really clever way to highlight your kids at play.